This simple video will explain what precession is and how we perceive it on Earth. There are two things to explain. First is the motion of precession and then precession of the equinoxes. But you don't have to worry, I'm not going to be showing you crazy diagrams with mathematic formulas that are hard to understand. I'm going to break it down nice and slow. So, what is precession? The Earth is tilted on its axes at 23.5 degrees and is spinning around at 1000 miles per hour and moving around the Sun. The gravitational forces of the Moon and Sun apply torque to the Earth to make it bulge at the equator. So if you imagine a spinning top, when it starts to wobble, it starts to spin around in a large circular motion. The Earth does the same thing when the axis of rotation itself spins. So if you have a look at this image, you'll be able to visualize it better. You can see the lines on the equator showing it spinning around and the tilt on the axis causes a circular motion at the top. I'll keep this image in the top corner for future reference. So what is precession of the equinoxes? The path the sun takes when it moves around the earth is called the ecliptic. So throughout the year the sun will rise in each constellation until it completes a full cycle. If the sun's path is observed from the Earth's reference frame, it appears to move around the Earth in a path which is tilted with respect to the spin axis at 23.5 degrees. This path is called the ecliptic. Now this might sound a bit hard to understand, but if you look at this image, it's a lot easier to understand. As you can see in the middle, this is the line of the celestial equator, and then the top line which goes up and down is the ecliptic. Remember that's the path the sun takes around the Earth. So, on the 21st of March is the spring equinox, that's when the sun starts to rise, and the 21st of June is the summer solstice, and on the 21st of September is the autumn equinox, when the sun starts to go down again. An equinox marks the start of a season. The spring equinox is on March 21st, and the autumn equinox is on September 21st. The Earth takes 365.25 days to orbit the sun, and throughout the year, the sun rises in each constellation around the zodiac, like Cancer the Crab or Leo the Lion. So, if on the spring equinox the sun rises in Leo, the following year it will also rise in Leo. However, one full orbit later, when the sun has returned to the same apparent position relative to the background stars, the Earth's axle tilt is now not directly towards the sun. So because of the effects of precession, the equinox will occur earlier in the orbit. From our perspective on Earth, it will appear to rise in the same place. But because precession is such a slow, long process, it will take an extremely long time to notice any change. It takes precisely 72 years for the sun to move just one degree. So for example, on the spring equinox, the sun rises in Leo. Over the course of a year, the sun moves through all the constellations in the zodiac, and the following spring equinox, the sun returns to Leo, but it will not rise in the exact same location. It has moved a tiny, unnoticeable amount. It takes thousands of years to notice any movement. It takes 72 years for the sun to move one degree. There are 360 degrees in a circle, so it takes 25,920 years for the sun to complete a full cycle. That's 72 times 360. If we divide the full cycle by the 12 months, we have 2,160. This is the amount of years each constellation will house the equinox. There are lots of numbers associated with precession. Half a degree of movement takes 36 years, three quarters of a degree take 54 years, and two degrees take 144 years. So try it for yourself. Work out how long it will take for the sun to move 60 degrees and comment below. Just times the number of years by 72 and you can come up with a range of numbers associated with precession. Go on, give it a try. Comment below some more numbers of precession. Here's a little history on the discovery of precession. Historically, the discovery of precession of the equinoxes is usually attributed in the West to the astronomer Hipparchus. However, if you look at ancient monuments around the world, like the pyramids of Egypt or the temples of Angkor Wat, the numbers are encoded into these structures. Or if you read ancient texts and myths, the numbers of processions always appear. That begs the question, when were they really discovered and by who? I hope you found this video informative and easy to understand. So subscribe and check out my other videos looking at the number of processions appearing all over the ancient world. At the end of all my videos I'm going to be recommending a book to read. Um, this is one of them, it's called Longitude by David Sobel and it's about this man called John Harrison. In the 18th century when sailors would leave land and they'd start sailing at sea they'd always get lost because they couldn't figure out where they were. And it was a huge huge problem and it was this guy who figured it out. It's only a small book. There's about 150 pages 
it's not very big tech so definitely that one to read if you like history.